Hello there, space people. This is Today in Space. I am Alex Rafanos, your science communicator. Welcome to the show. This week, I got back yesterday from Texas. I went uh, on a trip from San Antonio to Austin to Houston. And then in Houston, I had the chance to go to NASA's Johnson Space Center for the first time ever. And that was a super, super cool experience. I... I got to see a lot of things for the first time that I never was able to. And what I wanted to do was just kind of talk about my trip, talk about uh, certain things that I did, like what hotel I chose or like the location, just to tell you about where it is in case you want to go so that you just have something. I was looking online. There really wasn't a lot on the Space Center. Maybe, maybe I didn't look deep enough, but in my quick search... I didn't find, uh, like, a, I, I found a guide, which was really nice. I'll have that in the link for this episode. Um, I also have a bunch of pictures uh, from my Instagram, from the trip, from the all the exhibits that I saw inside the Space Center. And we'll go through those in a little bit. If you're on YouTube, you can see it. If you want to check out the, the images and the videos that I took, you can check out Today in Space Pod on Instagram. It's all up there, but we'll go through them on this episode. And I'll just share my thoughts. You know, if you're planning, it's a great place if you have a family and you're trying to bring them down and show them something really cool. Houston's a really cool place and there's an airport right there so you can fly right in. And it's a it's, it's one of those hub airports, so uh, there were a lot of people from the, around the world that were there. In fact, more than I would see in, like, D.C. Like, I, if you've been to the Air and Space Museum, I went there on uh, for the first time for a NASA social where I was picked for the New Horizons uh, preview at uh, APL in Maryland. That was one of, that was early on in the podcast. I think it was, like, two years in, and that for sure was a was a tremendous experience. I did, I think, five episodes on that event. So if you go back and you look up NASA Social on todayinspace.net or, uh, you know, New Horizons, that you'll find those episodes. And those were a lot of fun. We actually documented the whole experience. So thank you, NASA, for that. That was, that was really, really, really cool. And so anyways, my point, the Air and Space Museum is really cool. It's got a lot of really cool... I'm saying cool a lot. <laughs> it's, like right now, they have Neil Armstrong's suit on display, and it was cleaned up. It was an article for the Wall Street Journal. You can find it on the uh, Facebook page for Today in Space. We we shared the article there. And I guess all the – about 15 years ago, if I remember the article correctly, the suit was just starting to get worn. It was only made for one use. It wasn't made to, to last eternity so we can look at it. And the zipper started rusting, and the suit started to smell, and – they they uh, cleaned it up and are now putting it back on display. So the National Air and Space Museum is a really cool place to see a lot of space stuff. The thing I really loved was the Apollo Soyuz mission. They had those models, and there's a lot of Soyuz um, or in early Russian space suits and some replicas of their tech on uh, you know next to the Apollo stuff, which is very very cool. It's also early history of flight and stuff like that. I, I love that as an aerospace engineer. It's also another great place to go. But for Johnson Space Center, it had that, and it also has other things. It has things like uh, the other things. It has the rocket park, which has scale models of the Saturn V and other rockets, so you can actually see them and see what they're like. Uh, I wasn't able to go to rocket park it, <laughs> the the day of... You know, I had one day and I started early and saw everything inside. And that's what all those uh, photos and videos on Instagram were. And I went to go get lunch and then come back. And uh, on my way to lunch, there was a huge storm that rolled through. And I tried to get there early and only made it to the CBS. And then it started downpouring. And uh, it was a really good thunderstorm too. But I, I didn't make it to the outside stuff for that day and ended up just getting ready for an early flight the next day and kind of just resting and getting ready. So it just means I'm going to have to go back, which is a lot of fun because now that I'm going to be able to plan it more, I'm going to be able to do better. So that's what I'm trying to do with this podcast is kind of give you guys my experience and the things I could have done better so you know so you can have a, a better time. So if we go back to like location, there that whole area is like NASA themed. Like there, the whole way, and this is of course coming from someone who didn't live there. I, on my flight back, I sat next to someone who grew up in that area. Shout out. Uh, it was great meeting you. Uh, and 
Although it was really funny, like his his school mascot wasn't like an astronaut or something, which I thought was really funny. But that whole area, like there's a stop and little stop and shop corner place that was NASA stop and shop. All the 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 place I stayed was the Marriott near there. And right next to it was the ISS Conference Center. So the International Space Center, uh, Space Station Conference Center is right there and even had times. I only saw that at the end of my trip and I was going to knock on the door and, uh, and say hello. <laughs> uh, that's for next time. But yeah, at this hotel, there's this parkway, there's a little strip in front of the hotel as you're driving in and there's a little art exhibit. And that's one of the first, first set of photos from that trip. And it was really cool because they had little representations of each step, like the Gemini program, the early uh, uh, you know Apollo program, the ISS, uh, the Mars rover, and I think Space Shuttle was there as well. And, and, and of course, right in front of the hotel was a Neil Armstrong tribute of him placing the flag on Apollo 11. And all the banners were Apollo 50. It was the right time to be there. So that was that's a really cool place, and it's it's only right across the street from the center. So if you go there, you'll actually save on parking, which you'll have to pay at the NASA Center too. So that that could actually help you out. Now the actual space center itself was really something. They they definitely have uh, there's this huge sign up front that is what you'd expect for the front of a NASA center. Uh, this is the only way I can describe it. I, I didn't get a picture of that because the traffic was weird and I, I just didn't get time for it. But that's the place to get a picture the next time I go, if, if it's possible. There's this huge lawn and there was an exhibit, a, a Peanuts exhibit, actually, that was covered up. I don't know if they already showed it or if they were going to show it. But that was up front. I think I have a picture. I'll, I'll try and make sure I put it up on the podcast page for this for this episode on todayinspace.net. It looked like maybe a new age capsule or some something else. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to search the internet for it. If you know what it is, let me know. Um, send, send, it, send it over here, if you don't mind. And then they had two, two things outside. They had two NASA jets uh, that were jet planes that were set up outside, uh, right up front on an angle, like shooting up. And then they had an Apollo capsule and the big show, which was the, the thing that got me space nerding out as soon as I was driving by, cause I saw it peeking over the, the trees from the hotel was a space shuttle on the outside attached to one of the Boeing, uh, airplanes that carried the first mock-up of a space shuttle so they could test that it actually worked. And so that was probably the the highlight for me of this trip was actually being able to see with my own eyes and and, and get a, a level of understanding of the perspective of the size of the space shuttle. Because remember, I was born in 1990. So the shuttle program was already in you know in its in its stride as a, as a mission and as a as a program and the shuttle is the spacecraft that made me want to become an aerospace engineer i remember i was taking a college board survey that that's it was a website that i don't know if it's still around but when i was in high school when i was applying for college around like 2007 there was this thing called college board it's one of the first online things that you could apply to, to school. And it was the place you could do the, the common app where you could apply to a bunch of places. Again, it's been so long since I've been in college. I don't even know if this stuff exists. If it does, they had this thing and I'm sure they have them a lot more now, but it was called, it was a personality profile quiz. You know, they asked you a bunch of questions and based on your responses, they would kind of align your personality to what you could do really well based on your personality as jobs. And the, the thing, there was only two things that popped up. There was, which could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, but two things popped up. The picture of aerospace was a space shuttle. And when I saw that picture, I thought, you can have that as a job? Like, it just, it never, you know, I'm second generation Greek American, you know, it's, it, I sound very American and I think my accent's pretty good. I think I've assimilated a lot of American culture. I love America, but I'm still an immigrant at, at heart. The, the, the children of immigrants and the children of children of immigrants. <laughs> so that was just something that wasn't something that I even thought was possible. And at that point, that's when I realized I wanted to do that. Originally, I was going to be an architect. I uh, even originally, when I was super younger, I wanted to be a comic book writer. And I have I have some uh, things that I had written up, and uh, I have them, and maybe you know, maybe I'll dig them up and I'll show them. And I, I still do art. You know, the background for today in space, all the artwork, all the the animated pictures that we have 
on on the podcast if you're if you're either on todayinspace.net or on our YouTube channel where you can see it. Those are those are all me, and I it's something I really enjoy. Uh, it's something I couldn't I never found a way to make money, and I also really enjoyed science. And even when I was younger. I, I was always always loved when we had the portion where the science teacher would come in and as all back I'm talking like elementary school. Uh, Mr. Haffey was his name. Shout out to Mr. Haffey for like seeing the potential I had and actually like giving me things to do and get and getting me to work on stuff and pushing me in that direction. Big shout out to Mr. Haffey. Got to have him on the show. I got to reach out to him. And if you're listening, please hit me up. So science was always something that I was interested in. And the space shuttle was the first thing that I realized, the first, the first spacecraft that I actually connected as real and possible and something that I could help work on. And from the time I was a kid to my junior year of college when the space shuttle was retired, that was, for me, the spacecraft that I, that I wanted to work on in, in some way. And I didn't even realize it, it was something I could actually do. It was a real possibility until I was applying for college. Granted, I was not prepared for the rigor of an engineering degree. Uh, you know, all the people that, the majority of, the, of my friends, especially, that went to that school had robotics programs and, you know, after school stuff, rocket clubs. We, we did not have that in my town. I mean, even two years after I was, I graduated high school, if we hadn't pushed to get a new school to update it, our school was so old. It was a nice school, but it was old school and it was so out of date that our, our, those kids' diplomas would no longer have been accredited by the state for science. So, you know, it's not a sob story. It's just, you know, this is, it's so funny how when, you, when you're a kid, how those things influence what you think is possible and how prepared you really are for things. <laughs> but anyways, that was an experience to actually walk inside the shuttle. And there's, and there's, there's videos and pictures so you can see the size. You can see what was that exhibit's like. You can see inside. Uh, we was talking online. I forget your name, but uh, we were chatting on Twitter about the actual thing. And I guess that mock-up was made specifically, you know, to to be built so that people could walk inside it. You know, it's staged so that you can visually see how much room and what the spacecraft was like, even though where you're standing isn't actually something that the astronauts can do. It's an open bay. And just to see it from the inside, it's really cool how it's kind of like an airplane it, when you see the cockpit and all the stuff and you just see that the back end of, uh, back end of what you, th you, you know is an airplane is now just to deliver spacecraft into orbit and to what they did, which was build the International Space Station in orbit. You know, we, we only have the International Space Station because of the space shuttle. And so you definitely got to go see that. It's uh, Space Shuttle Independence. And that's a very and that's outside, which is pretty cool. There's also the Starship Theater where you could see uh, Skylab, which is the original International Space Station. That's really cool. There's also a bunch of spacesuits that are on display, and there's even like different parts of the spacesuit suits, like the actual portion where uh, they would cool the astronauts while they're in space so they wouldn't get overheated. And they also have a lot of future stuff, like what what NASA has created or, or prototype designs for th things that we need to prep for as we move towards Mars and we, we talk about human stay in space, you know, making life interplanetary, or at least the steps to getting there. We need all of that technology to line up. That's one of the big things that's, that's a struggle now with, you know, hey, we want to go to Mars and hey, we want to live in space, but there's so much work that needs to be done that still hasn't been done since we stepped forward on the moon 50 years ago. And it was definitely interactive, especially if you have kids. It's it's a great place. There's there's a lot of interactive stuff for the kids to do. It's definitely fun. It's the outside portions that are definitely you know the the if you're a little bit older, definitely check out the stuff inside. But I think you'll get even more out of stuff outside. And one of the other things that especially is around right now for the Apollo 50th was the replica of the command center during the Apollo mission. So exactly how it looked, you know, Houston, we have a problem. Exactly how that looked, they had set it back up. I also didn't get to see that. I just didn't have the time. Again, we'll make another trip and make it happen. But those are things to go and see at Johnson Space Center. It's it's a very fun time. Texas is great. The people are great, um, or at least that I experienced. Uh, they're definitely less 
assholes than, than we are up here in Massachusetts. That just comes with the cold, people. That's just how it is. And that's it. That was my trip to Johnson Space Flight Space Center, and I definitely can't wait to go back. You check out those pictures, see what it's like, and definitely, if you have the chance, go check, go check it out. I just had a chance I was traveling out there for something else and made the stop, and it was totally worth it. I picked up this great shirt I'm wearing right now and a bunch of other patches. Uh, I, I spent a little bit too much money on mission patches, but <laughs> we're going to put them on things, and we'll have them here for the podcast so we can all share. I, I really like the Apollo 13 patch. Uh, I think, you know, I, I was thinking about that. Which mission I like more, Apollo 11 or Apollo 13? And I think Apollo 13 is more influential for me because I think... I think Apollo 13 represents more of what my experience has been with engineering, where, you know, Apollo 11 almost, because of how uh, fantastic it was, it almost comes across as if, even though it was completely impossible, and the first time we made the impossible possible, because it went well and things didn't go wrong, it's, to me, not as influential as Apollo 13. Plus, you know, to, to defy the odds, to make sure that, hey, oh my God, they actually might die. No, we can't let that happen. Failure is not an option. And I know another thing that influenced me to get into space and what I remember to this day, like it was like I'm sitting there right now, was the first time I saw that scene where they need to they needed to filter out the carbon dioxide because the filter was wasn't working in the end. They had to they poured the box out and they are like, we have to make this fit into this using only this. And when they dumped it and then they, f- like they didn't, it was almost like they didn't even need to say, let's start. Everyone jumped in and wanted to work on it. That made me want to get into science. That made me want to solve tough problems. That is definitely iconic, like comic book origin story of like, what made you want to get into space? That scene is top five for sure. So, and that's it. I hope you have a great week. As always, if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to us on, I mean, everything. YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts. You can also check us out on social media at Today in Space Pod on Twitter and Instagram. You can also check out our 3D printing at AG3D Printing at Instagram and Twitter and our website, ag3d-printing.com, especially if you want to get something 3D printed. It's an idea workshop. So if you've got something that's written on a napkin, an idea that you've always wanted to do, but you don't, you, you don't have the money to buy a million uh, parts that you can sell them because you're not even sure if someone wants to buy it yet, or even what it's going to be, how it works, that's where we come in. That's where the idea workshop with AG3D comes in. You come to us and we can help you design it. If you know how to design, if you send us a design, we can help you make sure that the design is ready to 3D print. You can make a prototype and test it. And then if people really like it, we can set you up with low volume production. So we can do anywhere from, you know, two to 2000 in a year. So if you're interested in that, if you want to jump on an idea, if you just want to make something that you found online, that's really cool. We do all that. We're a 3D printing service bureau in your neighborhood. So if you want to hit us up, do that. We also have a bunch of stuff on our Etsy page. I completely forgot about my Etsy page, uh, uh, <laughs> literally. Uh, but that's the great thing. You put up designs and we only have to print them when you want them. So it's just stuff that I've designed. We've got phone holders. We've got a bunch of things. That's ag3dprinting.etsy.com if you want to check that out. And that's it. Have a great week and we'll see you next time for Today in Space. Today in Space.